Oh, it's a horrible Playboy Cardi impression. <coughs> That's literally what it is, bro. Oh, that was good. What an atrocious hook. <laughs> so that was one of our reactions to Lou Uzi Vert's new EP called Red and White. If you guys want to check out the full reaction, link in the description. But Lou, new EP from Lil Uzi Vert. Yes, it's sir. always welcome. Um, I mean, nine songs, super short. A lot of these tracks um, come from 2017, 2016. You're going to get an array of different sounds. But what are your first thoughts on the EP? I'm the disappointed. Bat? I'm not going to lie to you. I was expecting Uzi to come in with some heat. I mean, he knew the reception wasn't too great after Eternal Attack. He wasn't a big fan of it himself. And with this new EP, I thought that he was going to do a lot to kind of give us some hits, give us some 2016, 2017 vibes, because there's so many songs in here that were made in that era. Mm -hmm. And I'm left taking out maybe two songs out of this EP two so Two songs far. out of the nine songs I think songs the strongest on ones are I Know, where he you know, has amazing crooning all throughout, really landed on the melodies. Then you have Hidden My Shoulder, which is an absolute fucking banger. Yeah, that was a massive slapper. But I think that's a narrative for me in this new Uzi EP is that... Listen, you have a lot of songs that were previewed, let's say, in 2018 off of an IG Live. I mean, you have reunions of Molly Ra on this. You're going to have different performances. But I think Uzi strives best when he has that Uzi flow, when he has a super quick flow ripping through his verses, super, you know, high tempo productions. And he has a, a beautiful flow and cadence. I mean, look at Hidden My Shoulder, bro. You play that in the whip, it's going to sound immaculate. But I can't say the same thing for a lot of these songs on the EP. And that's why I think I'm a bit disappointed. It is a hit. I mean, you're getting the chorus and the refrain like three fucking different times man and the rep the repetition gets you a bit bored it gets you super disengaged and i mean sounds like he's impersonating cardi but that's, or yeet but that's another thing how do you Weak. feel about that because there's a couple of songs on here where i'm like fuck you know i think i've heard that from yeet or playboy cardi before so how do you feel about that conversation well i just feel like uzi's trying to like evolve his sound like we saw on a track like demon high which sounded unlike anything is in, ca in his catalog you saw that on a song like heavy off of the nego album where he was getting into this whole drill pocket so it's cool to see Uzi experiment. I respect that he's trying to find a new sound, but at the end of the day, based on everything I've heard from Uzi, the old shit sounds the best, even to this day. Absolutely. So no, there's no doubt about that in my mind. And I think that obviously you don't want to you don't want to have Uzi stay with his old aesthetic. I mean, it's gonna get boring, right? You always want to see an artist evolve and you know take steps in his career. But are you and, a fan of this evolution? But, but I'm, like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I could find replay value. My opinion. You know, I think there's gonna be a load of people that like this, but just for me, I'm not sure where I'm gonna find replay value in this. As you said. I'm taking two songs out of the nine out of this EP pack. And, you know, I have so much love for Uzi tapes and like EPs, right? Like that's how I discovered him back in high school was through those SoundCloud runs, through going through stuff like Lil Uzi Vert versus the world and going and seeing his peak. But I just feel like right now, maybe his sound is not gravitating yeah, towards me anymore. Yeah, I just feel like the energy was low on a lot of these. And Uzi's music is supposed to make you have a good time. It's supposed to be fun. And I feel like, although a lot of these will probably go hard in a mosh pit setting or in a live setting, but... To me, most of these are forgettable, and a big reason for that is the fact that the production carries him quite often. Not only that, but going back to a song, for example, like It's a Hit, you're kind of missing those moments like you would have in old Uzi songs or even a song like Hit in My Shoulder where you have those breaks in the beats where Uzi can go a cappella for a second or two, and there's a shift in energy. There's kind of that excitement towards the next line. And I just feel like the synergy between him and the beats were off too. I mean, a song like Glock in My Purse, that was a chaotic fucking disaster. Yeah, but it I, sounded like it was five beats merged into one. Yeah, that wasn't really a great song. But even at that, I, I see a lot of people talking about Final Fantasy Online, you know, that being, you know, let's say the best, the best song of the project. But I, I think that it's a weak song, in my opinion. Just don't gravitate towards it. And it's because, you know, you go through these lyrics and you literally have Final Fantasy, you know, at the start of each of these um, lines, like line after line. And listen, it's not like it's a short song either. I mean, bro, he literally mentions it maybe like 40 times plus. And she I understand every line with final uh, fantasy yeah, and I, okay listen I, I could get the appeal for repetition in songs i mean a lot of trap artists do pull it off and i've heard great songs with it i just in my opinion on this song it didn't sound great to me and listen we'll see what i end up taking out of it because it doesn't necessarily put my hopes down fur on the pink tape because i understand what this ep serves as he kind of wants to feed the fans and make sure that they're well you know well kept let's say until he works on to this project so are you fed after this because i mean to I, me I, I got two new songs bro like i'm not gonna lie to you yeah. I, I didn't expect to keep everything out of this and i would have had you know unrealistic hopes to do so because he's giving you a nine song ep he's obviously going to give you lucy snippets um that were previewed on the ig in full format now for dsps and i think there's only four songs on dsps and then you have to go see on soundcloud the rest of them so even at that like 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a couple of songs, but I just don't think this EP as a whole will be in my rotation this year. But I'm still excited for the Pink Tape. I want to see. Yeah, what I'm still excited on. for the Pink Tape because at this point, I'm really rooting for Uzi. He's one of, he's one of my favorite artists, especially from the trap era in the mid 2010s, and I feel like. When Uzi gives you his quotables, when he gives you these crazy flow switches, he's in prime form, and you don't really get much of that on this EP. I think it's good fan service to keep them with something to hold them off until we do get the pink tape. But overall, I think it's a lackluster project, and like I said, not too many memorable moments besides the production. Shout out to Molly Ross, shout out to Southside. I felt like most of the beats were on point. Yeah, most performances, of the performances, not so much. And then we'll, we'll have to see how this uh, project ends up leading into the Pink Tape because I want to see what type of aesthetic he's going to be going with. And um, Fajella said something very interesting in our live stream because we did it on Patreon, as I mentioned to you guys before. He said, like, Uzi could be saying absolutely nothing whatsoever, but when he's in his melodic crooning bag, there's no stopping him, man. Like, you're going to be bobbing your head no matter what. And I feel as if that was maybe an element that I was missing out of some of these Uzi tracks. Facts. So, guys, let us know in the comments section. How do you feel about this new Easy? E, uh, excuse me, Uzi EP. Let me know. Are you guys excited for the pink tape? And what are you guys expecting out of it? Plus, let us know where we went wrong, where we went right, and where you agree with us. Guys, thank you so much for all the support. We're almost at 100,000. I can't wait to celebrate with you guys. And much love from the whole NFR team. The community is super strong right now, and we're going to keep delivering you guys quality content. Much love for watching this, and we'll catch you in the next one.